I guess we can go. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, so I'd like to introduce statistical design experiments to you uh, as applied to sparkle endpoint evaluations. Um, and uh, the objective of the study is to introduce a path to critical practice of evaluations that makes use of contemporary statistical techniques to establish practice that can be used to refute assertions on performance. Uh, the focus on this paper is didactical. Uh, I present pretty much a toy example. Uh, and another objective is to apply well-established methods in statistics uh, ready to use in computer science as far as I know uh, and apply it to Spark endpoint evaluation. And if there is a message for the takeaway from this talk, is, it's that if you make assertions about performance of complex systems, you have to take, you have to think very carefully about you, uh, about how you prove that you have achieved something of general validity. And this is my proposal in that direction. So uh, I see many problems with the practice of benchmarking. Uh, a pragmatic problem is basically that it's a, it's a complex uh, it's a complex problem, and it would usually require a lot of parameters to test. And this complexity isn't is is pretty much pretty hard to uh, to uh, deal with. Uh, more importantly, there is no structured approach to investigate flaws in the benchmarks, and there is no meaningful summary statistics on the overall performance of the system. Uh, you can try to remedy some of these problems by trying to standardize benchmarks, uh, but then you can't, cannot test uh, assertions that are outside of the benchmark. For example, some vendors claim that their systems perform better on high-end hardware, and if you're standardized hardware platform, you can't test such an, such an assertion. Also, I'm seeing attempts to neutralize the effect of certain optimi optimization techniques, uh, and I think that invalidates the experiment. Caching is a good example. Uh, it's, it's a very good practice. It, uh, it's a practice that in many cases will bring considerable benefits. Uh, yet, as in, in several studies, uh, it's something that have been attempted to be neutralized. Uh, and if some, I think that that's an oversimplification. Uh, if something is too complex, then we need to enhance our ability to deal with complexity, not to oversimplify. So that said, benchmarking still has, has a mission. Uh, for example, if you know how know exactly the queries that will run in your system, by all means run them and see how they perform. Uh, so it, this, this direction that I'm proposing cannot completely re uh, replace benchmarks, that was, that's not the point. Uh, but I think it's important to understand, or my message is that a benchmark is an engineering tool, not a scientific experiment. So, design experiments were pioneered by Fisher in the 1920s. It's well established in many fields of engineering. The original application was in agriculture. And in medicine, many fields of medicine is pretty much the only game in town. It's pretty well suited to manage complex, very complex experiments, but it requires parameterization of the experiments. So for example, a query can be thought of as a parameter. The problem is that it's actually an uh, infinity of parameters. Uh, an, an important challenge is to break it down to a constrained set of parameters. So, to, uh, to understand my audience, how many of you have heard of or have, are familiar with design experiments? Please, please, raise your hand, please. Okay, so very few. That's, that's what I ex expected. So, uh, most of my talk will be about trying to introduce some key concepts of design experiments to you. So, a response variable is measured under various combinations of parameters. They, they can be, for example, throughput, query response time, uh, query execution time, uh, and so on. In uh, design experiments parlance, such parameters are called factors. A factor can be, for example, which concrete hardware platform, uh, which concrete implementation you're working with, uh, or several different implementations. It could be which hardware platform, number of troops in the store, or there's a whole bunch of different parameters, and uh, obviously we have a huge number of factors that are relevant to the performance uh, performance evaluation problem. So, uh, and for each factor, a range of possible possible values are fixed. These values are called levels. 
So for an implementation, you might, for, for example, test four store versus Vichoso, and in that case, four store is a level, Vichoso is a level. Uh, for a number of triples, you may have one or two a million triples or billion triples, whatever. Uh, for language features, it could be that one level is a select, the other is a construct. So levels might be continuous, discrete, different instances of a class, uh, and so on. So now we get to uh, what's called a design matrix. Uh, this is a very simple experiment. Uh, it has three factors. And as you can see, well, it's a, it's a randomized experiment. If it doesn't look random to you, it's because uh, humans are very good at spotting patterns. Uh, it's a randomized, uh, randomized expert, full factorial experiment, which, in which we iterate through all possible combinations of these levels. Uh, and that's a two to the two to the third, third. so it's a two cube number of runs. Uh, so we get eight. Um, so uh, at, the, at the experiment number one, that could be, for example, uh, the, the number two that, there in the case that you're testing ratio or so. Uh, with one million triples, and the union clause is present. The second experiment is that you test which or so, you have two million triples, the union clause is, uh, is present. Further down, for example, experiment number six, you're testing four store with two million triples, the union clause is not present. So, uh, to run the experiment, you iterate th through such a design matrix which has been which you can get, generate with well-known software, um, and you measure the response variable. Based on the response variable, you compute something called effects. Uh, it has certain similarities to regression, for those of you who know uh, regression, so I'm, I'm assuming some familiarity with basic statistical techniques. So. Um, and the main effects are considering the factors of their own. Uh, so the main effect is computed by by um, uh, a two-level factor is the average of the observed values on the second level minus the corresponding average of the first. Uh, and then you have interaction effects, which consider factors given the levels of other factors. Uh, and they might be complex, like for example, one implementation is better on a construct query on a small data set. Uh, in practice, this is actually very straightforward because it's so much good software out there. You use linear regression uh, with the one liner. It's, it's not a problem at all to do, do this in practice. So, uh, these experiments that we're talking about is called factorial experiments. And they come in two shapes, uh, full, as we have seen the design matrix of, and fractional. With fractional, we trade explanatory power for economy. Uh, we study in a paper one full factorial and three fractional factorial experiments, and we shall see later the final fractorial, fra fractorial ex experiments. So, the experiment itself, the main goal of the experiment is that it should be easy to understand for newcomers to design experiments. After all, I'm one of them. Uh, so the experiment that I've created is an experiment with eight factors and two levels where we compare a single Sparkle endpoint, uh, Sparkle implementation before and after some change. So it's a so an optimization problem on one uh, on one system. We use Forstore where we insert sleep statements in a joint function on one level and in the language matching function on the other to simulate an optimization that might have, may have detrimental side effects. So these are the factors and levels that we have introduced. Um, and the, well, the implementation under evaluation is one. The triple number of triples is another. The software and hardware platform, a very broad factor machine, is another. And then we have five language, uh, language feature factors. Uh, the one is uh, com very complexity of a basic graph pattern, uh, and then we have absence or presence of certain other patterns or filters. Um, and since this is a, a full factorial experiment now, we have uh, 2 to the power of 8, so 256 runs. Um, and the whole thing is implemented in R, which is a system, in, a system for uh, statistics that several of you might have heard of. Um, okay, so now I'm coming to the most important slide of this uh, this talk, and uh, 
And those, so we, this is something called a full normal dot. Uh, don't worry about the axis. It's, they are not important to understand this figure. Uh, I'll tell you what's important. So, in a normal plot, you, you plot the, uh, the effects against the, uh, a normal distribution. So the idea here is that if everything is due just to randomness, the, uh, the, uh, all the points will fall on a straight line. The points that do not fall on a straight line are significant to some degree. Um, and, uh, well, in, in this case, we have uh, also used some more formal, uh, formal criteria to label <laughs> those that are deemed significant. And there are very many of them. In, the, in, in fact, there's so many you can't see. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but but uh, I also tabulate the, some of the most significant factors. And <laughs> what you see on the top there is that the implementation factor. That basically means that uh, the, um, the implementation that doesn't have this sleep statement in the join function is 21, on average 21 seconds faster than the one that has that sleep statement. Well, that's absolutely no surprise to us. Um, and it's now important for the analysis to go through all of these uh, to understand why they occur. And uh, I'm not going to do that, it takes too much time, but I'm going to note that at the other end there, the, uh, the, these things, uh, land, optional, and, uh, and, and union, they are basically just hard things to do. So the queries that are that doesn't have a union clause in this are on average 17 uh, seconds faster than the ones that uh, that doesn't have that uh, has that union clause. So uh, similarly, we, they are all expected. They are demanding things to do basically, um, and we also see that there are interactions. Yeah, yeah I, should, I should also say that where the factor is standing on their own, that's the main effect. Where they are two factors with a separated with a colon, that's an interaction effect. So we also see that uh, interaction effects, where you have interactions with implement and, and something that requires a join, uh, they are also naturally very significant. That's also very expected. Uh, but one thing we see there is that Impl uh, the interaction between implement and triple C is also highly significant. Uh, that's the way such explanation, so I'm just going to leave it hanging there for a bit, because we want to do a hypothesis test. Also, we, we first we want to note that there are two factors that do not contribute, to, contribute significantly to the variation, uh, and that's range and machine. Uh, and in the paper, we describe how this enables us to average over certain factors and look upon the rest of it as a replicated experiment. Okay, so let's go to the hypothesis formulation. Uh, so we formulate a hypothesis, the H0, the, the standing hypothesis, is that the implementation is no better and all, whereas the, the alternative uh, hypothesis, the one that we want to prove, is that the new implementation is in fact better than the old. So uh, armed with this uh, semi-replicated experiment, we may create a one-sided two-sample uh, one two t-test. That's a very normal test to run with four values for each of the levels of implement based on the averages of the other factors. And in fact, when doing this, it lends support to H1. So, the, so we've kind of proved that, yeah, there is meaning in this, uh, which is due to basically us inserting sleep statements <coughs> in, the, in the joint function. So we knew that this was going to, 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 to come out right. Um, and the paper also shows how similar testing can be done to investigate when the new implementation actually fails. So the next question is, should this ex simplistic experiment stand up to scrutiny? Well, it shouldn't, of course, because it's an oversimplification. Um, what I've done here is that I've increased the number of triples in, uh, at one level and I ran it with only 64 runs, so this is a fractional experiment. It has much higher experimental economy. Uh, well, one thing we see that machine has suddenly become uh, significant. It's a very nice and broad factor, so useful to manage complexity. But on the other hand, triple C has also become highly significant. And that tells us 
that the, the, the experiment in uh, the, the levels in the previous experiment were wrongly set. And up there we had this implement triple C motion hanging. And that showed us that we needed to do this to, to, uh, um, to, uh, to find out if our experiment was flawed. So this invalidates the, uh, the preceding experiment completely. And this is one of the strategies for falsification that we outline. The experiment, this experiment, is also invalidated by the absence of certain features such as language modifiers. So the, the, the experiment that we've done falls apart completely, but that's exactly what we set out to do. So I'm seeing that we're running out of time here, so I'm just going to jump to uh, the conclusions. Um, so we saw uh, that the ex an experimental setup was a design of experiments, uh, how the analysis pointed out important effects, how we got the comprehensive view of the experiment, and how a hypothesis test could be formulated, uh, how two-level experiments can determine significant effects, and how more economic experiments can, design, can be designed, and finally how the experiment could be shown to be flawed. So, um, yeah, uh, I like to uh, the code and instructions and the papers and the paper with references is on GitHub. I'm more than happy to help anybody get it to run, and I'm also happy <coughs> to discuss further collaborations on this topic. So, thank you for your, your attention. several PhDs. Uh, but if you compare to how experiments are done in, or planned in other fields of science, uh, we need to really, really make a, a huge effort into making probably good, much better experiments. It should be a valid result on its own. Um, and like the Atlas experiment at CERN, that's 3,000 full-time researchers just to design the experiment. Uh, so my my bridge to, um, to, to, to federate, to do this in the federated regime, that's a, that's a long, long way. <laughs> uh, I just had to start somewhere. <laughs> 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 